Us. Hello. Welcome, everyone. Got Josh here today. Us. Got his Philly shirt on. Tell you a really cool story about this shirt. It's actually my shirt, but just sit up so they can see. If you're a, a baseball fan, you'll know the Phillies, but here's the crazy story. Um, I was on an aircraft coming back from Los Angeles to Australia, and there was this guy got on, an Aussie guy, and he had a Phillies thing. And I said, oh, you're a Phillies fan? He says, no, I'm actually, he works for the company, and he's a talent scout. No, it wasn't. That's right. It wasn't. LA was a talent scout for the Philly, Philadelphia Phillies. And he'd been working really hard uh, in Asia. He'd been up to Taiwan, Korea. Uh, man, I hope I don't have stability problems today. See this? Like, so he'd been working hard in Taiwan, Korea, and Japan. He got on the plane. He was exhausted. And uh, so I kind of helped him. I said, oh, come with me. And he was going, what are you doing? I said, oh, look, just leave your bag in your seat for now, but let's head off down the back. And I took him down the back of the aircraft. In those days, it was still a 747, so there were four seats across the back. And I said, just sit here, and I blocked it off. And he was able to sleep the whole flight. He had four seats to himself. He just rolled over, went to sleep. If you're ever sleeping on a plane, always face backwards too, by the way. I'll tell you why. If you face forwards, your back and your butt, stick into the belt buckles but if you face backwards you, you put your head on a pillow and your butt kind of just hangs off the edge of the seat and all the belt buckles are in the gap between your body so you, it's much more comfortable but anyway so he was he was he slept the whole way he was asleep the moment the seat belt sign went off bang and he woke up i had to wake him up on on landing and he was so wrapped and he actually sent me this um, box of philadelphia phillies paraphernalia man. and this is the t-shirt i gave That's most cool. of it away there you go nice. and i've got my torbjorn look look at the t-shirt i got on today this is my t-shirt from the lawrence club last young lions can you see that on the screen yeah this is from the young lions so all the best at the young lions they're doing really well in scandinavia so anyway us mike lorden good to see you man rochelle us hope you're well frederick 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 marco Paddy, us. I watched that interview with uh, Wayne, Wayne Hinchin. What a champ. Uh, he was always, you know, he's very similar era to me. He just, I think he started fighting tournaments one or two years after me. Um, so we're always there together. And uh, as a Queenslander, we're always supporting each other. And my nephew, Christian Dunn, who's a really great fighter, he won the Queenslands many years ago. He's like a middleweight version of Gary, really moves super well, but he's in his mid 40s now but anyway um my nephew christian got transferred up and he's training up at wayne's dojo so i'm heading up probably january sometime i'm going to go up and train train with them anyway daniel clarence us look josh they all know your name now <laughs> come on get away this is not fair so anyway <laughs> woody us good to see you from indonesia francis monsieur 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 mon ami us Oh, it's 12 o'clock midnight. Wow. Well, oh, that'd be right. You're in uh, all the way over there. Yes. <laughs> Good one, Torbjorn. Yeah, send me one. Look. You all need one of those. So anyway, guys, thanks for coming along. Wayne Hinchin is his last name. Harry, uh, thanks for coming along. Um, today I'm just going to continue on and just consolidate some of the things I did uh, with the uh, takedowns. These are really, really valuable and they're very high percentage takedowns a lot of judo takedowns and 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 wrestling takedowns and so on aren't necessarily realistic because of the rule set so in judo once it got into the olympics it became very much us chokshin society remind me what your name is because i want to thank you chokshin society us just give me claudio thank you Good, Claudio. Thank you, because I, I was watching one of your videos and you had the 12 mottos of Masa, uh, the 11 mottos of Masayama, and you used my translation and you put a quote and you actually gave credit. <laughs> and um, anyone will tell you that uh, that just doesn't happen. People still 
content and training ideas all the time. And I try to give as much credit as I can simply because I've been stung so often that I know what it's like. So thank you, Claudia. Appreciate that very much. Well, Stig, good to see you, man. Hope it's uh, not too cold up there. But anyway, I'm going to continue on today with some takedown principles. Now, remember, we're predominantly a stand-up fighter, but sometimes we just need to take someone down in a very high percentage safe way. It's definitely okay, Claud Claudia. It's definitely okay, unless you're saying that is okay. Yeah, I appreciate it very much. The, the fact that you even quote your source is very, very nice. I appreciate that. Um, you know, we need to look at high percentage takedowns. Judo has some fantastic throws, and what you can use in judo to win you a gold medal will just get you killed on the ground uh, in the street because a lot of the throws, they're beautiful throws, but they will end up where the momentum will take you underneath and you can be underneath someone and in big trouble. So we have to, oh, it's Rob, good to see you. So we have to always consider the outcome, not just the, oh, yeah, no worries, um, not just the desired outcome. Okay, that's one thing. But we also need to... Uh, look at the downside as well. And if any of these techniques have a downside, then you need to work on that first and foremost to make sure that it maintains its position as a high percentage. It's also one that you can walk away from safely, okay? So the technique has to be strong, but it also has to allow you to maintain a position of control. You can't take someone down and finish underneath if you don't know what you're doing. Um, some takedowns are definitely full-on uh, valuable where you end up underneath if you know exactly what you do, okay? There are a number of takedowns. Um, I, I'll try to get through as many as I can today. Uh, I, think, I think it's really valuable. So if you've got your uh, logbook, take some notes. Um, before I do, though, Patreon family, thank you very much. I've prepared uh, messages for you all, and I'm sending out individual uh, discount codes for the book, but I haven't sent them yet because we're actually, the, if you go to the website and have a look, you'll see that it's actually up and ready, so that's fine. But what um, we're doing is we're adjusting it now, so hopefully the goal is to be able to pay in not just US dollars but in a number of different currencies. So we want to be able to pay in singles, US dollars, Australian dollars, New Zealand dollars, Great Britain pounds, euros. Uh, they're the ones where I have bank accounts. So they're the ones we can use. Uh, so anyway, Patreon family, thank you very much. Us, appreciate your ongoing support. That allows me to do this channel the way I'm doing it. Um, if you're not a member, by all means, uh, go to Patreon, have a quick look. So let me just put this here for you, see if I can get it right. Have a look there. Um, and if, you're, if you haven't subscribed <clears throat> to the page, please do so. I'm trying to hit 1,000 um, sub subscribers. That would be great fun. Uh, hit subscribe, hit the bell a couple of times, um, and hit the thumbs up and the one, two, boom, boom, thumbs up. And, in the, and a, uh, that was actually one, two, three then, wasn't it? Yeah. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah. Um, thumbs up, leave a, uh, leave a message and uh, subscribe. So anyway, well, let's move on. First of all, before we get going, it's really important that we understand that with any takedown, the danger is what happens after the takedown. So there are th certain throws, for example, or certain takedowns, which they're not high percentage and the downside is really a really bad downside. You just don't want to be caught on the ground. So pretty well that you take all the range of skills and you get rid of 90% of them or 80% of them and you focus on the ones that are high percentage and will allow you to maintain top control position. Now, the greatest threat of any of this sort of training is gravity. And what do I mean by that? I mean that injuries occur as a result of gravity more than they occur as a result of excessive force. So, for example, I can be here, I can be putting a cutting arm bar on uh, the, the tricep here. Boom. I don't even know if that's on. Is it tap? Is it tappable? No, I'm just, I'm just 
boom. So I come in here, right? Now, if I really went nuts and went bang and I started, you know, there'll be an injury. But the chances of that happening are really, really low. Where the injuries occur is when I fall down or slip and some part of my body is in a bad position and gravity does the worst, the, the rest. Or if I'm with Josh and I throw Josh down and he slips and I land on top of him and, and some part of his body is in a bad position. So uh, that way, just move on over a little bit if you like. So that way you get injury. So please remember, everything we do, we do slow as smooth, smooth as fast to allow you to control what you're doing and avoid injury. It's really, really important. And if you watch as we do it here, we do it very, very carefully and slowly because slow is smooth, smooth is fast. By doing it slowly, it allows you to feel where the body parts have to be and when they have to be there. That's really, really valuable. Okay, so the first couple of drills we do, you can do as a one-man drill. I'll show you as a two-man, then a one-man as well. But the important point for most of the time is posture. Now, the reason posture is very important is, one, it allows you to stay on top. If you have bad posture and you try some of these techniques, what happens is as you go in, your posture is bad and bent over. All they do is they move their hips and land on top of you. And you're underneath going, well, it wasn't meant to work out like this, okay? The other thing too is if my posture is bad when I come in and my head's down, Oh, he's going to whoa, he's going to push my head away. Or he's going to lock me up in a guillotine where I'm boom, like this. And, and the next thing you know, I wake up wondering why the heck it didn't work. Okay, so most of these drills are how you need to relax your legs. Josh has got a bad knee, so um, we're just being a little careful here. Um, so it's really, really important to make sure that you always focus on good posture before you focus on finishing the technique. Because when you're doing it slow and smooth, you have a cooperative partner, things will always work a lot easier uh, than if you are working with a non-cooperative partner, okay? So you can get lulled into a false sense of security that what you're doing actually is good and it may not be. So let's just have a look at a couple of things first. Who have we got here? LG Us, Kyokushin Ottawa. Good to see you all the way from Canada. Hope it's not too late there. It must be about midnight, I reckon. Okay, so looking here. The first drill is a single leg drill designed, I'm just going to move this light, designed to make sure that you do the drill with good posture. Okay, so all I do is my partner shakes up. Let's move back. There we go. How's that? For some reason, the screen seems smaller. Let me just check it, what I've done here. Is that correct? It seems right, eh? Okay, so we're just starting up in this fighting stance here. The closer you get, the higher your guard has to come because of the dangers of being hit in the street. So I'm back here, you're in kick range. I'm moving into punch range and my hands are coming up into a double cox comb. To, to practice a single leg, I have to step in. Sure, there's there's lots of like, with lots of techniques you can do from there. But for our purpose, as Kyokushin, if I want to bring that leg forward, I'm going to step away from that leg, pull it forward. You see that? So from here, he throws a punch, pull, bang, maybe I'll pull. Look, his leg comes forward. See that? Or maybe I'll just pull here, pull it forward, pull the leg forward. Okay? Or I step in. So I can go like that in his face, bring the arm up, and I've stepped in. Okay? So I need to have his left forward, my right leg forward, or his right forward, my left leg forward. Like that. That's the first thing you need to work on. Good guys can make it work from anywhere, but as a general rule, you must do it from this mirrored position because, look, how far my arm has to travel as opposed to there. It's too far. So I need to make sure either I step in forward or I step forward. See that? So let's come, we'll, we'll just do it here so you can see. Here's the drill. He throws a punch, one, 
two. And I'm putting my head on his chest, looking at the shoulder. And then all I do is posture up. Whether I take his leg or not doesn't matter. Again, just throw the jab for now. One, two. And look, I have to make sure my posture is strong so I look up and posture up. Now, we can do that as a single man drill. All I do is I step forward here and then up. Step forward here, up. Step forward here, up. So we'll do that together. So we start here. Step forward, up. Step forward, up. Step forward, up. Now that's almost like straight out of a kata sometimes. Boom. Pin and two even. There. This pin and two is a single. You know, you come around, you finish this position here, and then in this position. Okay? What that is, is I've stepped off at the angle, he's throwing a punch form, and I've stepped through, and there's my single. That's all it is. My head pushes, my arm pulls. The strongest techniques always have a connection between a push and a pull. This is why we practice push-pull, push-pull. When we throw the jab even, we used to work the idea of a circle. I'm not flexing. I don't have anything to flex with anymore. We don't, so we work on the idea of this circle. See, like this. And then the rip, and then the rip. And I'm still getting that feeling of the circle going through my body. So I'm pushing <clears throat> and pulling. Well, it's the same principle here. When I step in, I'll let for pin down two. One, this hand obviously stays up for good reason. Boom. Two. Okay. And we step through. Okay. So exactly the same principle broken down. So for the sake of the drill, I go one, two. My head comes up. I get a little headbutt underneath his jaw. <laughs> Josh used to have a really nice smile. I've just broken all his teeth. <laughs> so bring the other leg forward so people can see. So I come in here, and here's the drill. So remember, step in, up, step in, up. So as, as he throws the punch form, step in, up. All right, now the reality is, I'm stepping up as a drill for posture, okay? In other words, I don't want to be down here. If my leg head's low like that, he just pushes my head away and I have nothing, okay? So the reason I practice the drill is I get good posture. Now from there, I can start to push with my head, pull with my leg, and I just fall to the ground, okay? That's the first single man drill, uh, single leg drill. The second one, and these are both taught to me by my good wrestling buddy, John, I mean, uh, Rigo Ciparelli. So the second one is a double. Let's show you, I'll show you the drill as a two-man drill to start with. We call this a scarecrow drill. Puts his hands on my shoulders. I'm going to move back so you can see my feet because it's important. So he stands with his feet, yep, just a little bit wider and square even. Good. That's all we do. I'm going to pop, step heel, step toe, drop my weight down, Forward, up, and lift. Okay? Now, if you want, you do it with a little bit of volume uh, um, impact. So that we come here. I go one, two, and then as I step forward, he leans over my shoulder. Boom, like that. And then you can pick him up. Josh weighs like 140 kilograms these days. <laughs> but that's what you can do. Once again, one, two, three, four. And then as I come from here, Josh bends over my shoulders and I make sure my posture's good and I make sure that my posture pops high. It's fun too. Yeah, it? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we can... I'll just quickly check that. What's Ken? Good to see you, man. This time change here. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, you, you've had a summertime change, have you? Yeah, going back to wintertime. Okay, so for a double man, for a single man drill on the double leg shot, we start in here, we step toe, heel,
heel, knee, step. Now notice this angle here is 180 degrees. I don't want to step with my head down. That's the golden rule. That's the number one thing you're trying to kill is this habit of stepping forward and looking at the ground. I step to here, and then I, I just drive up straight in the air. There, like that. So again, we go toe, heel, knee, step, up. Good. Again, toe, heel, knee, step, up. Don't do it like him. Yeah. <laughs> He's all over the place. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, try it again. He's blaming the mat now. Yeah. You see that? He's going, oh, oh this is my mat. <laughs> okay, again, we're in. Elbows are in, hands are up. Toe, heel, I mean heel, toe, knee. Push the hip forward, step through, and up. Now, the reality is there's a 90-degree turn there too because it's all about angles. So we go from here. Let me just do it once so you can see. Heel, toe. Down, step. Now watch this foot. I turn a 90 degree angle and then drive off at that angle. Replay that and watch how we do that because that's a really valuable drill. Heel, toe, knee, step, 90 degrees. Josh didn't turn. Yeah, it's a, it's <laughs> okay. Now when we do that with someone, I'll do it at a couple of angles. First of all, at this angle so you can see the angle change. Say that. So I know you can't see me, but I'm going to pop, toe, a heel, toe, knee, step, change angle, and then push to the side. And it's very, very strong because they're already naturally fighting the force, force forward, and then you suddenly tip them over. So from this way now, Josh and I just like to dance. Yeah. Okay, so the scarecrow comes up. This is just for practice. I don't try and push his arms up because it's not realistic. His arms are even half heavy. I'm not going to get them up. All I'm doing is popping his tricep with my tall hole so that as I go down, see his hands follow me down? I don't want them to follow me down. All I do is, that's all I do. Step, one, two, and drive. Now, once again, it's about pushing with the head, pulling with the hand. So it's this motion. Okay, so you've got that push-pull motion happening again. Uh, and that's a very important motion and a very powerful uh, technique if you drill it correctly. Okay, so um, I just came up to check the messages, but people are ignoring me. <laughs> okay, so let's look at a, a, the series of techniques. One technique which I find really works well and is quite safe is the headlock throw. And the reason I like it is because even though you expose your back with this arm here, it's hard for him to take my back. If he brings his arm around my neck now, I've actually got a good angle on him. So there's very little exposure to my, to my uh, throat or neck. And all I do is I take him down. And if I have this hand, he's not going to hang onto the neck because he needs to break his fall. If he doesn't break his fall, that's the bitumen that does the rest for you. So what that one is, is from this position, the reason it works really, really well, it's starting to get hot, isn't it? The reason it works well is because it's like I'm throwing a right, you remember from last week, throwing a right cross. Boom. Like that, you get that little rabbit punch effect, and for a split second there, a little bit dizzy. When Josh smiles, you know it's worked. Okay, so we're in this position. Let me go from this side so you can see. We're shaping up. Boom, he throws the punch. Bang! I'm going to come in. If he doesn't throw the other one, that's okay. I'm just going to thread my arm like I'm throwing a right cross. Okay, I prefer he throws the left because there's nothing to block my arm. If he throws the right and I block it, let's say it's like a crazy haymaker, and I block it and I go here, he may block my arm. Boom, and, and it could neutralize the throw. So what I like is you're moving around. He throws the left. Okay, when he throws the left, I'm just tapping it away. There like that. Countering with my own right, but the right just skims past his jaw, and I hit him on the neck instead, okay, with my foot bicep. Boom, bang. You see what I did to the arm? I took the arm away as well. 
And then from there, what I'm doing is controlling this, controlling this, and stepping with my hip all the way through. So I'm not standing square. If I stand square and I pull, he, he can hold on to me and just move around behind. Okay? But what I do is I turn 90 towards the, the, the camera. Yeah, see that? I don't want to stop here. What I want to do is actually go all the way through. So now I'm looking, instead of looking at 12 o'clock, I'm looking at 10 o'clock. And then I bend my knees, good posture again. And as I straighten my legs, now this is straight. This is one of the bunkai applications that I enjoy out of three. Yeah, 100%. Claudio, you can't, you're not going to get it unless you twist all the way through because the twist is part of the momentum that you need to build up for the throw. Okay? And there's two ways to do this, and both are really, really nice. Okay? So we come in, bang! I don't even have to wait for the punch if I don't want to. I'm going to do our standard yours. So I'm here, I don't want trouble punching. And then I just sit there like that. Look, the smile yeah, on his face. Okay? Boom, bang. And then it doesn't matter which leg's in, in, in front, I'm going to turn all the way through. See, I've turned all the way to that angle, and then I'm just straightening my legs and throwing down. Okay? Another way you can do it, which is very practical, uh, you know, there's green light, orange light, and red light situations in the stream. A green light, I describe a green light simply as a situation where the, the drongo who's giving you a hard time will wake up in the morning with a headache just from his excessive alcohol wondering what happened the last thing you need is to put him in hospital like you're some kind of uh you know overlord who um is the man because you knocked out some poor drunk okay and quite often they're just having fun okay so you've got to have a sense of humor about life so sometimes you just want to take them down in a way that protects them so i can do it like this and you just go as slow or as anything you want to do with your knee okay? so i'm here coming in one two, three, and look what I do. I go down on my knees and I drag to the ground and I end up in this side control or scarf hole, kesa gatame in Japanese. Notice I have my hand connected to my knee. I like that. Why? Because for Josh to get out, the elbow is everything. So if I'm here, he gets that elbow on the ground, he's pretty well out. If he can get his elbow on the ground there, it seems like it doesn't connect, but if he can get his elbow there, he's pretty well out because the next step is he just turns his hips, goes to his knees, and he's out the back door, and he's gone, and I'm in trouble now, okay? So what I always like to do is connect my leg in my hand. Now when he tries to pull that elbow out, it's blocked. It slows it down. He can still get it out, but it slows it down, and then I add on pulling the elbow up, Squeezing the armpit here. And the next thing I do is I lift my backside off the ground. It's a little sneaky thing that you can do. You get down on the floating ribs. And then as I come, so you listen to Josh's voice. Speak out. Uh, oh, stay receive. Yep. A, B, C, D. Nice and loud. A, B, C, D. Now listen. E, F, G. <laughs> so you can see the difference. From your perspective, I've hardly moved. But what I've done is I've taken 75% of my weight on my butt and I've made it 95% of my weight on Josh. And he giggles because and people will tap if they don't like it. Okay, so I'm in position. If I need to control someone, his hand slides to their hand. I push it down my leg and then I quickly snap my knees together and I have that heart arm under control. Okay, now if he's a really bad guy, I can go to town on him. But what happens is, look, this hand comes over to block. I just switch to an arm bar, okay, or I switch, we call this the Queen of Sheba eats her grapes. It's like I lie here eating grapes, but I have both arms trapped. There's not much he can do. If he has a collar on, it's very easy to ch choke him unconscious because he's got no hand to defend. Okay, if he's a real bully, you slap him around a little bit, like Josh. <laughs> okay, so that, that's a really, really 
very easy to maintain control position and it all starts and finishes from one, two, three, all the way through, and I can throw there for a high amplitude throw onto the hard cement, or I can go down on my knee and drag him with me and make sure that I keep my head solid so he doesn't drag me over like that. Push the hand down, trap it between my knees. I'm not trying to get an armbar or anything. You can get an armbar there. I just simply push that one down, that one up, get the armbar right there. Sometimes as I push it, they don't want it to go, so they bend their arm. You just keep it going. It goes under that leg, and it's even worse, isn't it? Yeah, horrible. Okay, start to hit them. What do they do? They defend. I take that by the arm bar. We'll put it behind my head. I'll let that one go because I'm not going to hurt. And you have good control. And the beauty of that is anytime you want, you simply put your hand on their face, get up, and run. Okay, so you're safe again. That's that throw. Okay, the next one that we want to work on is we, we uh, penetrate in for the single knee tap. One, two. Same setup. But instead of turning to throw, I simply keep going. Put my hand on his knee and run and he falls over. Let's watch from this side. Watch my left hand. It's really important. I'm covering. Punch comes. Maybe that one comes, maybe it doesn't. It shouldn't, okay, because if you quick, boom, you come in there like that. Okay, now watch this hand. The last one I kept going through, but let's say he pulls that hand out. I go through, he's pulled that hand. All I do is this hand shot puts, this hand traps his knee. And they just fall down because they have nothing, no movement in their knee. It's very important that I don't make the mistake of doing it at the hip like I'm a, a rugby tackler, okay? Because now when I do that, he just walks backwards and within a few steps, he's regained his center of balance and then you're in big trouble. But look at the difference between this hand on the hip and this hand on the knee. He just falls down and he's not even faking it, okay? So that's the next one. I'm gonna come in, break away with a double Break out, or he throws a jab, or he throws a left right. Boom, I'm going to come in with a shot put, try to knock him out with my bicep. Boom. But, and tap the knee, and they just fall down. And it is as simple as it looks. It's almost, this is one of the giggle factor techniques. We have a series of techniques we call the giggle factors. The reason they're called the giggle factors is because you giggle, they're so easy. Okay? And if I wanted to maintain control, boom, boom. I come through and I keep control of that knee and then I come all the way over for a knee ride. There like that, boom, boom, okay? So you can control them like that as well. I'll just do that a little bit further back so you can see it again. So I'm in this position, one, two, three, knee ride. I'm in this position, I can hit. He starts to defend with his arms. You can go for arm bars if you want. Or once again, I can pin that arm there and I can maintain good control here for a fair bit of time. Every time he starts to move his hips to get out, just punch him. Okay? So that's what we call the knee tap. And that's the beginning of a very cool flow. Yes, good, good wrestling technique. Pin and sun, exactly. Pin and sun. This technique here, Torbjorn. One, two, three. That's exactly that. One two, three, and you just do the throw. So that, that series of techniques in pin and three is exactly. You do the front kick, boom, you do this a couple of times. You actually go past the second front kick, you use it for momentum. You know, in that cardio, you kick up and you stomp down and the top part of your body gets pulled over. You can imagine if I do that, boom, a couple of kicks, and then the third one I go past, and then boom. You, you use it for momentum and you go straight past them. It's very, very uh, strong. Okay. So we go now from the knee kick, the knee tap, 
but he pulls his leg back. Boom, I simply slide and I keep going into the single. So the, the arm that was on his neck slides down his back to the back of his knee. My head now looks at his shoulder and I do that drill that I did before, the single man posture drill. And now if he tries to push my head down, it's almost impossible. Okay, and all I do there, I'm just gonna be a little careful with the other leg, because it's a bad knee. So I'm gonna come in here, I've gone to tap, it hasn't worked, I come down, join my hands, backhand on top, if you can remember that, very important. Why? Because if my front hand's on top and he pulls my arm up, pull my arm, pull my arm off, pull, pull it up and pull it off, bang! Okay, but if my back hand's on top, now when he does it, it's not going to come off so easy. Okay, so I'm here, and then I posture up. Now all I do is push with my head, pull with my arms. And they fall down. I can start here, slide across, or slip into a knee right again. Okay? So that's the second part of the drill. He's done the knee tap, but he's smart. He pulls his leg out of the way. Boom, I come to the single leg. In this one too now, he pulls his leg out of the way. Boom, then I switch sides. So once again, I'll do it from over here. Shape up, throws the punch at me, boom, bang, knee tap. But he's pulled the leg back, I'm too slow. Slide to a single. Okay, if I get the single, great. But he pushes, uh, pushes my head away and takes a step back. Boom, I slide straight under. And I've switched to the knee tap again. My head up, remember that drill? We did that drill before. One, two, head up, okay? So I wanna make sure I go bang, bang. Head up, head up, and then change angles. But that son of a gun, Josh, is too smart. So I go one, I go knee tap. Takes the leg back a little bit. Just enough like that is enough for me to lose my grip. I'm going to transition to single. Okay? I want to, I can, there's lots of ways to do singles, and, and they all may not work all the time. But the important thing is pull the leg, push the head. And that's what happens. They start to fall down. This, the primary defense for this is he just pushes my head off. So it pushes my head off. I can't fight it. So all I do is I loop my head underneath. Then I go back to good posture again and notice this hand is right on his knee, not on the hip, on the knee. And then I go to there. But he starts to take that leg away again. And yes, he breaks my posture. So now I move on to the next technique in the flow, which is the low single. One, two, single, double. If I lose that, watch what I do. Let's move right back. So I'm here like this. I'm going to go straight from this position, straight to the ground, put my hand on the ground behind his heel. See how my hand's on the ground, not on his ankle. Won't work. Has to be down on the ground. I don't have to go all the way down, but if you end up all the way down, that's 100% fine. You can all go all the way down here. But if you can stay up, I have my hand behind the heel, and I simply push his knee with my shoulder. This is a shoulder version of Garyu Kata. You notice that? So Garyu, we're here like this. Boom. Okay? In the Kata, you're like that. All right? That's irrelevant. What's important is the level change. And if I want, and I'm in this position, I just got up, he's coming in at me. Boom. There's the takedown for Garyu. Come past and finish. Okay? Well, it's the same principle. The reason the takedown for Garyu works is you have a push and a pull in opposite directions. Push, pull. Okay? This is much stronger where you get the hand on the heel pulling, the shoulder on the, sh on the knee pushing, and that takes them down. Okay? Now, sometimes they'll, they'll be trying to pound down on your head but they don't get a lot of power, and if they do that quite often, their foot will start to come close. You're just going to reach down low with both feet now and knock them over. I, I was trying to make your head hit that pole, so, but I missed. <laughs> okay? 
So once again, let's look at the flow. One, two, three, doesn't work. Single, that doesn't work. Four, double, takes his leg away. Four, five, low single. Notice as he's going down, I'm lifting his leg. If his feet are on the ground, he has an opportunity to get up. Okay? If his foot's in the air, he tries to get up and he can't. See? Get up. See? <laughs> Simply by lifting his foot, it makes it much, much. Of course, you know, if he's going ballistic, he'll try to get up. But leaving his foot there, he can get up much easier and punch me out on the way up. That's my point. My point isn't that he'll never get up. My point is it'll be a second or two longer for him to get up. There, I come past, pass it through here, and then I can continue on with my own offensive. Okay, now when you take someone down there, a couple of things can happen. One is they come over the top and start to hit you, in which case often their foot is close. The other one is their foot is far away. So you might remember last time we were doing this, I was saying when I get the students to do it, they do this with their eyes closed and then they feel for the leg with their eyes closed. And if they feel the leg, they immediately gather it in and turn it into two legs. If they can't feel the leg, they immediately pull. Okay, so I'm going to use this leg simply because, yeah, because that's your bad knee. Okay, so watch. I come down. Oh, I close my eyes. I feel for his foot. I can feel it. So what I do there is drive and catch that ankle. I keep going and he falls over. Okay? But if as I feel, I can't feel his leg, I can't reach his foot, then all I do is pull and he falls over. This. So it's either one or the two, generally speaking. And if as I pull, keep your balance, keep your balance. Keep your, see what happens to keep his balance? What do you do? What'd you do, Josh? Uh, Josh? Bring my foot forward. Bring your foot forward so I go back to the second first. The first one. Okay, that's that flow. Then we want to work on getting to that primary, it's just a, a couple of primary dominant ground control positions. We'll stop there for a sec, have a little bit of a chat. If you've got any questions or comments, I know Frederick has more experience grappling than me because he's did judo for 20 years. Um, that takedown knee tap is almost impossible to uh, counter, Claudio, if they time it properly. It's one of the highest percentage. If you time it properly, it's almost uh, impossible to counter. The only way you can counter it is if you're able to turn and get your knee in a line with the tap. So what I mean is, as Josh does the knee tap to me, I try to punch, he comes in, bang, and he taps that. The only way I can do it is somehow get my knee in that direction. So now when he tries to push that tap, I'm able to keep him down. Okay? So that's what a good guy will do when they see the, the knee tap coming in. Boom. You're doing it to me. Bang. Boom. There. And he taps that knee. If he just keeps driving with this arm and my knee doesn't turn, I'm going to fall. So what I have to do is bang. He comes in. As he does that, I turn. And then I keep that momentum going. Okay. Other than that, Claudia, good question. It's very, very hard to counter if the timing is good. Does that make sense? They're all, all these techniques are all timing, of course. Uh, if you can time them well, they're almost impossible to uh, stop. A very high percentage. Uh, that low single is one of the highest percentages of all. There is another couple of takedowns, which I'll do on another day, actually. I think I won't try and show you today because it becomes too much information. Um, but if you just work on those with that knee tap, knee tap into single, single into double, double into low single, single into gather both legs, single into pull uh, one leg, okay? Well, Frederick's a um, highly experienced judo player, so please let me know if I'm doing anything wrong, Frederick, because I'm learning all the time. But once you get to the ground, it's really important that you keep in mind a couple of fundamental keys. 
Just relax your knees, man. The first key is the higher head wins. Okay, if you watch what happens, I'll get on top of Josh and I'll get on top of Josh and switching your center of balance from your opponents helps to get out. Yes. Well, that's a good point too, Claudia. Um, probably one of the unwritten things or the unspoken things that we may end up doing naturally, which I think I might be doing, hopefully, but not thinking about, is the connection. I have to have these correct connections all the time. And if he breaks that connection, and one of the ways, one of the ways to do it is to switch your center and get that, break that connection. Um, that can counter, and it has simple counters, and simple counters have counters to those counters. So it's a never ending story. And this is why you take the logbook and you have the thousand squares and you just practice the technique a thousand times. And within a thousand reps of any technique, I'm fairly, you don't need 10,000 hours and 10,000 reps. I would say a thousand to 2,000 reps of anything done with concentration and clarity, and you will pretty well be able to overcome all the possible counters to that technique. Okay, so on the ground now, once we've taken our partner to the ground, we take them down in different ways. Okay, let's say we take them down with the knee tap. We go here to see. So we're coming in, boom, knee tap. I take down, like I said, I'm going to come past with my knee. See, my knee now has control. If he has a jacket on, you can pull the jacket up. Makes the pressure even more. My knee's basically on his solar plexus right now. You can also drop it down below his rib line and come all the way over there. And that allows you to slip into other control positions as well, which allows you to slip into um, arm bars and so on. Okay, so the first takedown, the knee tap, continues on by controlling the knee. The hand that's on the knee, you don't take it off the knee. Because for him to be able to counter what I'm doing, he simply connects this knee and this elbow underneath him. Watch what happens when he does that. Well, bang, I take him down. I go, look. Let's go back and do a little more. I'll do it from this angle so you can see. One, two. If he connects that elbow and knee, now I have no way to control. Even if he comes this look, that elbow can knee and knee connects. Where are we? You can see us, right? Yeah. yeah, elbow and knee connects. I have no penetration. Okay, so having said that, when I do that knee tap now, bang, this hand doesn't leave that knee. See that? So now he tries to connect his elbow and knee, he can't. I push the knee away. Okay? And if it rolls all the way over, often what they'll do is they'll go to turtle. And as they go to turtle, they take their back. And you have the choke as well. Okay? That's the first control. Second one is single leg. Bang. That doesn't work. I go single leg now. Look. Pull the legs. Push the head. Go down with him. Control this leg once again, and I maintain higher head position. If he gets his arm around the neck like he's got it, don't worry about that. You can hardly do anything. Even if his hands are joined and he's really trying hard, all I do is I take this arm and put it on his jawline and press down. And if I really want, I can start to work on Akimura arm bars. Yeah, I got the man wrong. Yeah, well, here like this. Peel it off. Okay. So once again, that's off the single leg. Here, boom, single. Remember, good posture stops me from getting my head. See, if I'm down, he pushes my head under his armpit, and the next thing you know, I'm being choked out. Oh, whoa. Okay, so to prevent that, I need good posture. Now he pushes my head, it's not going anywhere. Okay, I push, pull, push with the head, pull with the arms. Take him to the ground. I can go from here, knee right, or I can just follow him down to the ground like this, maintain control. Bang, 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 bang. Arm bars, boom, wrist locks. So if you need to control him, you can bring him into this wrist lock and drag him up. And he'll get up 100% of the time. Okay? That's the control with the single. 
Remember, we're not looking for highly technical, difficult flows. We're looking for highly uh, successful, simple flows. The single leg doesn't work. Whoa, just push my head. Bang. I come in. This time, I'm going down once again. His saviour is his knee-elbow connection. So if when I go down, I let go of his knee, I come here. Look, now I can't get in. He's got that knee and elbow connected there. See that? So to prevent that now, what I do is, boom, there's my double position. I'm going to come in. Watch this hand. <clears throat> As I drive, I keep it on the knee. Look, my hand is still on his knee. Now I'm putting all the pressure with my shoulder on his ribs. Say the alphabet. A, B, C. Bit of pressure there, right? Yes. I take the pressure off, say the alphabet. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K. There, you get the pressure right and it's good. Okay. We come down. We can continue on into a side control position. Or a really good close to be there when they finally get out but know that they'll work all kinds of ways to get out okay but there is an alternative which i really like and works really well if you want to control someone on the ground there are essentially five points two arms two legs and their head and the more of those points you can control the better remember before i said all josh needs to do to uh neutralize what i'm doing is get that knee and elbow together and especially if you can get them towards the ground. Bang, there's not much I can do there, okay? So that should be my first port of call, is stop that elbow and knee connecting. The next one is control the head. The next one is control the shoulder. For him to get out, just start to get out, watch. Freeze, what did he do? This shoulder passes his center line, okay? So if I simply remember to get out, get out, get out, all I'm doing is stopping that shoulder from passing the center line, and I can largely reduce his ability to get out. What he has to do is move away more now. But if I just keep coming in, it doesn't help him. Okay? So I'm trying to control as many of those points as I can. If you can get control three, two legs, two arms, and a head, if you can control three of those, you're doing really well. If you can control four, you're doing exceptionally well. And that's what I love about this technique, this hold down position, because it allows you to control four. So I'm coming in here, instead of coming under the head, I'm going over the head. My weight is on his head. My whole body weight is on his head and jaw. I control this. Maybe he tries to punch me. That's okay. If he punches me, I have an arm bar there straight away. And if I can lift this leg and put it over my leg. See like that? So now he tries to get out. Get out, go for it. It's really, really difficult for him to get out. It's that simple. And I'm taking my weight off his face so he can breathe. Imagine if I was a bully, I literally do it the way I like to do it here. So it's a big difference. And I have these arm bars here as well, form, etc. Okay, so there's that takedown, which I, I call a reverse kesser. The Kessa being that um, first one I did early on in the session. You have the reverse Kessa and the standard Kessa, and they're both really, really strong takedowns. I mean, control positions. Okay, so once again, let's just recap everything before we wind it up. Start off here. I come in, hip throw, but I turn 10 o'clock, not 12. Bend my knees, and as I pop, I drive. Boom! And I take him to the ground. If I, don't want to, if I don't want him to hit the ground too hard, I go down on my knee and I drag him with me and I end up in a Kessa control position. Okay? Then I start to flow. In. Tap. That's all it is. Very hard for him to hit me there, especially when the momentum's going. I'm driving through. Push, pull. Okay? In. Tap. Change to a single. See that? My arms are together. Whoops. Here. Pull, push, like that. Pull, tap, single, pushes my head, double. Take him down that way. One, there, boom, single, 
pushes my head, double, takes his leg out of the way. I go low signal, take him down, control the leg, and control him on the ground. So that's the flow that we can look at. Remember with that low single too, just to finish off, let's go back here a little bit. One, two, three, four, five. I keep my hand horizontal here because the danger of that knee reshaping my face is very real. So as I go down, I go coxcomb, but a horizontal coxcomb. Not a vertical. I don't need a vertical because the position I'm in is different. I go horizontal, so now if he tries to knee me, I'm going to pick it up with the cox comb. Come to here, the low single, remember, I close my eyes, feel for the foot. Bring it in a little. If I can feel it, I gather it in and drive towards it. If I can't feel it, I pull this one away. Just like that. Okay? Slow is smooth, smooth is fast. I've said that three times. You know why? Yesterday I watched Shooter. <laughs> and Matt Damon says it in Shooter. Is it Matt Damon or Mark? Mark Wahlberg. Mark Wahlberg says it in Shooter. Slow is smooth, smooth is fast. Well, the problem with that is. Um, do you mean on the ground? Do you mean when I'm in control on the ground? Do you mean when one person's in control? Look, rolling away always has its options. The danger of it is you really know what you have to know what you're doing because I'm presuming, Harry, that you mean on the ground. But if we're on the ground here, anyway, it's just like that. And I'm trying to control, and I'm here. And I switch, is this the position you mean? He can't roll away. He can't roll away because I have control of his arm. He tries to roll in, he can't, and especially when I put the head pressure properly right there, I drop my ribs on his head and I go to there. Now roll towards me. He can't. Impossible. Unless, mm -hmm. he's, unless he can do a uh, 360 degree with his head. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Bring this leg up, capture it here, go here. I love that. So I have control of his shoulder, his head, the inside shoulder, the outside knee. The only thing he has is that leg. But he can't take it off the ground to bring it across the body anyway because so much weight is on it. If he tries to turn it, let's say he comes in and somehow he's in a position where he can turn away, turn the other way. Well, as soon as he turns away, I'm going to start to choke him here. Come in this position. And the next thing you know, capture this arm, put the choke on. If he uses this arm, we're going to push that down, capture it there, and then finish with the choke. Let's... Yeah, I'm not too sure which. I don't know if that helps. But anyway, folks, listen, I really appreciate you coming along. I hope you got something out of those. High percentage, easy, practical takedowns from a stand-up viewpoint, okay? The knee tap is a ripper. You transfer into the single. You have to work on the single posture drills and the double posture drills. It's really important that you understand not only because if your head's down, they can push it down, but also they can choke you. And the other thing is when your head's down, you have no power connection on the spine. By coming up, all the power is reconnected. So you have to practice those single drills. Play the video back and check them out. Okay, so we have, we have the knee tap. We have the headlock throw, which is really powerful. We have the knee tap, knee tap into single, single into double, double into low single. Okay, take down, elevate the leg control. On the ground, gravity rules. That's why it's always better to be on top than on bottom. Unless you spent 20 years training from the bottom, stick to the top. Okay. Arigato they must start. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Josh. <laughs> Thank you. Right? Yeah. He's got a bad knee. <laughs> okay. Appreciate Josh coming along. Who's Frederick?
Well, there you go. I didn't know you were that big, Frederick, but by all means, you get a good knee. That's, that's heavy. Yeah. yeah. I'm about 175 and about 92 K. So you've got 20 Ks and 15 centimeters on me. Uh, good on you. Thanks. Oops. What days and times. Oh, yes. Listen, I need to let you know. Um, as time moves on now, um, I'm going to, at this stage, reduce um, these training sessions to one day a week. I'll let you know when, probably from uh, next week. I'm going to be doing Friday again, of course, uh, but in the near future I'll go to one day a week and then I'll have more time to concentrate on the, uh, on the book, but also on the selling the book, but also on um, the Patreon family so I can do things uh, for the Patreon family. Um, but anyway, thanks again. At this stage, uh, Claudio, it's Monday and Friday from 3 p.m. Queensland time, which is 0500 GMT, Greenwich Mean Time, not 6 o'clock, uh, not 500 London because they're in summertime, but uh, unless they've changed back, maybe they've changed back. Uh, but anyway, 0500 GMT. Thanks, everybody. Good on you, Josh. No, I don't know. It's just go away. He's gets be invited back. <laughs> gets all the gets all the attention. Okay, good on you, everyone. Us, Torbjorn, thank you for getting up nice and early. Harry, good on you. Thanks for that. Thanks, everybody. Mark, Mike, Lorden, Us, thank you very much. Marco, thanks, buddy. Rochelle, stay healthy, Rochelle. Glutathione, the magic of the world. Kyokushin Society, that's Claudio, us, Frederick, big and slow. <laughs> slow is smooth, smooth is fast. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Us.